They had to say not a dollar difference. They had to say they were on a unity ticket with Labor on schools funding. In fact, they even paid for posters the, the, to be made for their the member, electorates the for member election for Sydney, day. The member for Sydney will resume her seat. I call the member for Mitchell. I, I have I warned I warned uh, about props. I will not have this house made a mockery of. The member for Sydney. The, the member for Sydney will resume her seat. The member for Sydney will resume her seat. The member for Sydney will resume her seat. I call the member for Mitchell. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I do rise to speak on this matter for public importance because the government regards education funding as very important. And today it is concerning, as the Prime Minister said, um, when we do see Lawler, international reports. The member, the member for Lawler will remove herself under 94A. She is out of her place and she is out of order. The member for Member for Mitchell. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And, and this kind of poor behaviour is exactly the kind of example that Australians are turning against. Uh, this sort of uh, this sort of sham protesting, faux outrage. Uh, not here for an intelligent, sensible debate, but in, instead, you know, ha holding up uh, shameless props, which don't say anything, mind you. Because if you listen to this debate carefully and you follow what is going on, listen to the Prime Minister today. Point of order. Uh, the member for Fenner. Deputy Speaker, I draw your attention to the state of the House. Uh, Corum, ring the bells. Bring on Christmas. Oh, yeah. 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 Work. You're very lenient, Mr. Speaker. On her. You should have been named. Reflecting on the chair. Very disappointed. As bad as those protesters. Okay. I call a member for Mitchell. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And uh, of course, it's good to have all my friends and colleagues here to talk about the importance of education uh, spending because this is a government that is spending record amounts of funding on education in Australia today. And it is to the eternal shame of the Deputy Leader of the Opposition that she storms out of here in a hissy fit because she's not allowed to use props in relation to a debate. They are the rules of this chamber. And the rules of this chamber apply to all members equally because uh, we are here to debate intelligent points. And when you consider that this government is spending record amounts of money in education, every year every Australian government has increased education funding in Australia. And it is, of course, a fact today uh, that we still are seeing results results um, in international standards and in international terms in important subjects like maths and reading and writing that are not living up to the amounts of money that the government is spending. If you listen to the uh, Deputy Leader of the Opposition, 
the, can I have that word? I'd call the uh, Leader of Opposition Business. Yeah, Deputy Speaker, the bells are still ringing outside, uh, calling as though the quorum is still on. We have a member here on his feet as though the parliament is happening. We, no, 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 I'm, I'm not yeah. blaming you. I'm just referring to the chaos that's going on in this building at the moment. Um, point of order, Deputy Speaker. Point of order, Deputy Speaker. You have a number of members there interjecting out of their seats. I ask you to take the same action with them as you took with the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. I, no, it's highly disorderly under practice. You know who they were. Member for Goldstein was one of them. They just interjected out of their seat, highly disorderly, I, I, understanding orders they must be kicked out. That, and you have to have the same level of responsibility that you took against the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. The, the, that decision is up to those and the, the person in the chair, that is me. Uh, any, anything else on the point of order, Leader of Opposition Business? Well, I'll, I'll wait to hear how you rule on it. But it's no. highly disorderly. It's one of the, the practice is stronger on very few issues than interjecting out of their seats. And for, the, and for that member and a number of his colleagues to have not only been interjecting out of their seats, but interjecting while they were standing along there like some football mob crap just shouting out and treating the parliament no differently to how we were complaining about people behaving in the Order. public gallery, Order. then you will Order. set the standards Order. of this House, Deputy Speaker. You will set the standards on how you rule on this issue and whether the same rules you put on the Deputy Leader of the Opposition apply to your colleagues on that side. Order. 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 Member for Mitchell will resume his seat. I, re I will make a statement. I, during the MPI, and uh, members will be aware, uh, I have shown a great degree of leniency over the last uh, time that I've been in the chair of, uh, of things that could be considered disorderly. I did warn uh, about the use of props uh, and, uh, and as to uh, why the bells were still ringing after the end of the quorum, I am not sure as to that. I will now call the member for Mitchell. Le leader, uh, on a point of order? To, to the point of order of the uh, manager of opposition business, he was not present in the chamber, Absolutely. was not present, didn't see the Absolutely. events, and if he was present in the chamber, he would understand what this was about. <laughs> the, the speaker correctly warned members opposite that the use of props was not allowed in the chamber. It is a long-standing practice in this chamber. You correctly advised them that if and you, you further warned them that I'm speaking right. to the point of order, I'm allowed to do so. Yeah. Uh, you further warned them that if they again used props in this house, that they would leave the chamber. Exactly. Now, we were here, this was the proper functioning of the chair of the house, absolutely proper functioning. And further, you were lenient on the Deputy Leader of the Opposition right. when she reflected I, I on the chair as she voluntarily left the chamber. She was not removed from the chamber, she voluntarily left. I, and, uh, it, Member for Mitchell. You, you absolutely I, acted correctly. Deputy Speaker, point of order. No, the, the Member Mitchell to a completely different point of order. Yeah. I raised the issue. I came in here to raise the issue about the bells ringing yeah. outside. When I, did, I, when I was on my feet, I raised a second point yes. of order about the highly disorderly conduct of those opposite, yes. and I ask for your ruling on yes. whether but, they will be ejected. But my ruling is they will not be ejected. Okay, that your ruling be dissented from. Yes. Yes. Mr um, Deputy Speaker, I move that your ruling be dissented from. I seek okay, the do, do we have a seconder? It's seconded. I second the motion and reserve the right to speak. All, all those in favour? No, I'm speaking on the motion. Right. I'm sorry, uh, but sorry, Deputy Speaker. You have to at least know that when someone moves dissent, they're allowed to make a speech. Okay. And if you don't know that, how are you running the chamber? What level of chaos do we have in the chamber if you don't even know that someone's allowed to speak to a dissent motion? It's a dissent motion. There are no points of order, order during a dissent motion. Order. There's order. The order. The, the member for Watson uh, can speak to his motion. Thank you. Very much. I... Members on both sides will cease interjecting. The Minister for Small Business will cease interjecting. The Manager of Opposition Business, if I could just... I'm not seeking to interrupt you. If I could ask you to resume your, your seat. And I didn't see, obviously, um, all of the events that unfolded, but let me 
seek to um, find a remedy through it, if, if, if that's, uh, that's at all possible. My understanding is, and I think the manager of opposition business is probably in the same position as me. I'm not sure if he was watching everything that occurred. I was just in a meeting. But my understanding is that the, um, the deputy speaker asked uh, the member for Sydney not to uh, persistently use props, and in addition, there were members behind using props. Now, I have addressed this matter many times uh, before. The rules for question time and the use of props are, well, well, the practice is very clear, let me say that. It's, um, uh, it's, it's not allowed under the practice. I've taken a, a practical attitude. When I see a prop, I ask it to, to be removed. Uh, when it comes to speeches, uh, the practice does make clear that there's, there's more latitude to illustrate a point. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, but for members behind holding up props, uh, that is highly disorderly. Uh, members interjecting outside their seats is highly disorderly. That's very clear in the practice. It's certainly not part of the standing orders, but it is very clear in the practice. And what I would say to the House is clearly the, the deputy uh, speaker w was absolutely seeking to ensure that the debate be conducted in a way where props weren't improperly used. And for those uh, members sitting behind the member for Sydney holding up props, um, that was uh, highly disorderly. And the reason uh, the deputy speaker ultimately took the action he did was because clearly he couldn't see a resolution. Now, that's without me having seen everything that's, that's happened. What I'd like to do is just suggest a way forward that is pragmatic here, okay, given that uh, the House has important business to conduct and we could spend a lot of time discussing all of this uh, in an unproductive way. Uh, clearly, um, if members are asked to resume their, uh, their seats, they should resume their seats. Uh, warnings are always uh, an important feature of the debate. But uh, what I would suggest is that um, in the interest of moving things along, uh, that the member for Sydney just resume her speech. If there's any use of props, this calm demeanour will evaporate <laughs> uh, very quickly. And I'd like the, the manager of opposition business now. I'd like to ask him to. Uh, speaker, on that basis, I withdraw the motion that I moved. Okay. Now, um, in terms of where we're up to in the um, in the uh, no, it's all right. We've got very very good people here who can keep the time. That's not the issue. Uh, the issue is uh, where we'd got to with the next speaker. So, um, okay. So the, the current speaker. Well, I'll just ask the no, member. For, ask the member. For, no, the member for Mitchell just can resume his seat for a second. I've, now, was the member for Mitchell? Was, was the member for Mitchell uh, speaking in the debate? Yes. You are. So, so the member for Mitchell, uh, uh, and I've had the indication from the member for Sydney, can uh, complete his speech, and at which point the member for Sydney will come back for the allotted time that's there. Now, the I now call the member for Mitchell. No, Mr Speaker, yep. uh, it, this was a heated matter. In, in leaving the chamber, mm -hmm. the member for Sydney directly reflected on the chair in an unacceptable way, challenging the whole authority of the chair. And I would ask her to withdraw it. I would ask her to withdraw that because it, it goes to the confidence of the second speaker, the de second deputy speaker system. Mm -hmm. um, it was maybe said in anger. Um, it would be uh, appropriate, the it would be appropriate if helping. that was withdrawn because the speaker is, should be honoured at all times. The member for Sydney. Speaker, just to assist you and to move business along as you've attempted to do, I'm happy to withdraw. I thank the member for Sydney and I call the member for uh, Mitchell, in continuation, if he wishes to continue. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll um, I'll resume talking about the debate on education because. That